Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about arrangements of people in a straight line. Such arrangements are also called permutations. Let us suppose there are six men and five women. In how many ways can they be seated or arranged over a row of 11 chairs? So friends, this is the base question that we are going to learn how to solve. And also, sometimes the question setter may introduce additional constraints like men and women seated alternately or no two women seated together or sometimes the question may even require three particular women to be seated together. This is a popular mathematics question belonging to the chapter permutations and combinations. And in today's video lesson, we are going to learn and build a strong foundation for this concept. Let's begin. So let us tackle our base problem first. In how many ways can we arrange or seat six men and five women over a row of 11 chairs? I would say there are various possibilities for doing this because there are no constraints on seating men and women separately. So they can be seated in any order. For all practical reasons, there are 11 different people. To solve this question, we must note this fact that there are 11 different people. So what if some are men and some are women? The base question doesn't make a distinction between men and women. Let us try to occupy these chairs one by one. Okay, so the first chair can be filled in 11 ways. Any one of these 11 persons can get seated here, so 11 ways. Once you fill this chair, there are 10 people left. So next chair can be filled in 10 ways. After filling the first two chairs, there will be 9 people left. So third chair can be filled in 9 ways and so on. Fourth chair, 8 ways. Fifth chair, 7 ways. And we can extend this pattern. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And finally, for the last chair, there will be only one person left because everyone else is already seated. So the last chair can be filled in only one way. By using the fundamental rule of counting, since we have to fill the first chair 11 ways and the second chair 10 ways and the third chair 9 ways and so on and the last chair 1 way and means multiply. So together, these 11 chairs can be filled in 11 into 10 into 9 into all the way up to 1, which means 11 factorial ways. These 11 people can be arranged in 11 factorial ways. It's a huge number. We don't need to calculate it because it's not required in the question. Uh, and in general, remember that n different objects can always be arranged in n factorial ways. Now let us introduce our first constraint. If we have to see these six men and five women alternately, then in how many ways can they be seated? So friends, this constraint of alternate arrangements makes it clear that we will have to start with a man. Because if we start with a woman, there will be two men left at the end of the row. So alternate arrangements essentially means that men occupy the first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth and eleventh chairs, the odd numbered chairs. Women occupy the second, fourth, sixth, eighth and tenth chairs, the even numbered chairs. Six men can be arranged in their respective positions in six factorial ways and for each of those arrangements, the five women can be arranged in their respective positions in five factorial ways. Together, these men and women can be seated alternately in. Okay, tell me, do we add 6 factorial and 5 factorial or do we multiply 6 factorial and 5 factorial? So the answer is because we have to seat men and women and means multiply. So fundamental rule says multiply the possibilities. Therefore, our answer is 6 factorial into 5 factorial ways for men and women to be seated alternately.
Moving on, let us discuss our third constraint. Six men and five women are to be seated over chairs in a row. In how many ways can they be arranged if no two women are seated together? So friends, the only difference between this question and the last question of alternate arrangements is that over here, women have to be separated out, but men could be together. Under the given constraint, two or even three men could be seated together is possible while the women are all separated out. The way we do such a question is read the phrase no two women together. So we need to pick the other category that is men. Say this symbol denotes a man. If we space them out, there will be five spaces between the six men, one space before and one space after. So how many spaces? Seven spaces in total. These spaces are earmarked for women. We can place maximum one woman per space. So five women will together occupy any five of these spaces out of the given seven. How many ways of doing that? Seven C five ways of doing that. This exercise decides the order of seating. It reserves the respective seat numbers for men and for women. Supposing we selected this space, this one, this one, this one and this one for a female. This would mean the order of seating males and females is already decided. In this case, the first, fourth, sixth, ninth and eleventh seats or positions are earmarked for a woman. And as the question statement required, no two women are together in this. Just make a note here. The easier way to do this was to use the letter M for a man instead of the symbol and spaces like these ones. This is another possible arrangement where we see these two men on the fifth and sixth seats will be together, but no two women are seated together still. And this is yet another possible arrangement where we see these three men on the fourth, fifth and sixth seats will be together. But as the question stipulates, no two women are seated together in this arrangement as well. Once we have decided the respective positions of men and women, we can then arrange the six men on their assigned seats in six factorial ways and the women on their assigned seats in five factorial ways. So for our answer, we multiply both steps. 7C5 into 6 factorial into 5 factorial. That's our answer for no two women seated together. And interestingly, in this answer, the possibility of alternate arrangements is included one. And finally, for our last constraint, wherein we have to seat three particular women together, let's name the five women as follows. Arna, Bhavna, Charu, Dhriti and Isha. In short, A, B, C, D and E. Now A, B and C need to be seated together. So consider their group, the group of A, B, C as one unit. Now tell me, apart from this unit, how many other independent units do we have? So functioning independently, we have this group of ABC as one unit. We have the two other females, D and E, two other units and all the six males, which means six more independent units. So if you consider them together, there are nine independent units, which can be freely arranged in nine factorial ways. But there is a catch here. Corresponding to each of those ways of arranging the nine units, the three girls can interchange their positions in three factorial ways. Now this means that the three girls can be seated together either as ABC or ACB or BAC or BCA or CAB or CBA. Three factorial, that is six ways in which they can interchange their positions. So number of arrangements possible is equal to 
9 factorial into 3 factorial. That's our answer. That brings us to an end of this video lesson. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, do subscribe our channel and press the like button. Also, it's a humble request that you share this knowledge with your classmates and colleagues. On your screen is a glimpse of other popular maths videos on our channel. So stay tuned and happy learning. Bye-bye.